I hear those rich people in Byzantium pay a handsome bit for rap musk. Bet they also pay to make it stink less. Supposedly, it uh, looks more attractive. You're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial Age Mammoths. I'd heard they'd gotten a new hacker. Is that why everyone's making such a fuss about you? But what are you doing on Monarch? Maybe we're not so isolated as I thought. So, what can I do for you? Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. They were pretty distinct. Monarch doesn't exactly have a thriving dental industry, and Isaac seemed to get stuck in all sorts of bad habits, dietary and otherwise. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team, started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. Here to catch a game? I'm afraid the transmission's still pretty bad. What can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda, like it's done him any good. All it means is the tossball games get to us in fragments. Makes him real hard to watch. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. Oh, I don't need any of it. It's also I can talk to Sebastian. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. I couldn't. What if he says no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this 
quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. Good to have standards, I guess. I know what I'm looking for. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like salt tuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. You'd be a hit in Byzantium. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now, what business brings you here? Out at Devil's Peak? If you're headed that far, I see you've brought the right woman for the job. Damn right. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Yes, that's it. Channel your anger. I only wish I could do the same. <laughs> I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but... It seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. So-called is right. We've got our hazards, but we're still here, damn it. The board took off without so much as a thought for the folks left behind. And now you don't have to play by their rules. Sounds like a deal to me. Well, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. I have people to look after. I need to be practical. That's why Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. A lot of good that'll do. I'll just find another reason to turn tail and abandon you. Not if we secure the proper safeguards first. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands.
It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Not long, but the devil is always in the details. And the salient detail here is a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. Never realized fighting the bureaucracy could be this interesting. It is quite the rush. An ordinance, of course. We do things in a civilized fashion here. Not like Graham's iconoclasts. Hey now, they may not shower as much as you do, but they've got their own sort of civil. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you just crawled out from under a rock. Forms and procedures are everything in Halcyon. And this one is located in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Saying what which way? That's just what it's called. It's supposed to stand for something, but I forget what. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some... dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were... mixed. That ain't fair. They didn't leave on account of the hazards. They left on account of their cowardice. The hazards just gave them a reason to put to paper. Sharp as ever, Nyoka. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. 
Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Hmm? Oh, well, there were surely other junior executives with more open minds, though none of them had the temperament to handle the paperwork. But I was keeping my tone flat and maintaining eye contact. You weren't supposed to notice I was avoiding the subject. This is why you've never been good with presentations, sir. <sighs> Very well. Many, many years ago, Graham Bryant and I used to be collaborators of sorts. Graham Bryant. He leads a group of extremists out in Amber Heights. But he used to be as much a part of the corporate machinery as any of us. Much as he likes to forget it. Indeed. For all the good it did. MSI's then-leadership wasn't enthusiastic. They insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2, along with everyone else. In a manner of speaking, many of us stayed behind, in an act of quiet but firm defiance. As the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. Must have pissed off some real big suits to get stuck with that. On the contrary, I wrote lots of very important reports on behalf of top MSI officials before I was able to achieve this position. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Straight bullshit is what it is. A fabrication rich folks use to preserve their investments by leaving a lot of people here to die slow. Nyoka has the right of it. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. For the greater good. Allegedly. Monarch may be dangerous, but it's hardly the wasteland the board describes it to be. Whatever the board's goals, the greater good has little part in them. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, that'd go a long way toward rebuilding our homes. If you can't beat him, might as well join him and reach into their pockets. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes, 
it'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. As far as I'm concerned, the less said about Graham, the better. Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. and We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. What can I do for you? I shipped with a merc who had a gun like yours, Nyoka. He polished it, sang to it, slept with it. Not like that, as far as I know. Sounds like he had himself a discerning palate. Where are you going with this? He couldn't hit the broadside of an assault cruiser, hence the tin shredder. Wouldn't be the first man I met bearing compensation for his lack of skill. You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Sebastian, you ever get your hands on those pheromone sacks? Manipillers ain't gonna hunt themselves, you know. I must have hunted a dozen. But I couldn't find a single sack on any of them. I must be looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Manipillers ain't got pheromone sacks. I just told him that so he'd stop asking me for advice. At least I'm getting a good haul of claws in the process. You're in good hands. Traveling with Monarch's top merc. Still, if you want any rat glands or manti claws, I've got you covered. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that raptid on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Nice of you to say. I like her too. And I gotta admire anyone with her passion for canid hides. But you don't have to butter me up. Now I see what Celia was talking about. This guy almost reminds me of Erion. Who? An old acquaintance from the Groundbreaker. Real piece of work. That's mighty kind of you to say. But we were talking about what a lucky gal Celia is. Anyone who can afford such a fine collection of Mantisaur claws has it pretty good. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong, I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady, always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. Nuh-uh. A lot of people think I'm not too bright, but you're not fooling me. I know she can't get these goods anywhere else. Come on, that's crazy. No one would do that. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a day with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this, or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on.
Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. If I never smell another raft, it'll be too soon. Weren't you a sawbones? Figured you ought to have smelled worse. Sure, but those things reek like bad cologne. It's different. I'm with you there. At least humans have the courtesy to wait a while before their bodies start to sting. Most of them. It smells like wrapped in here. Oh, it does work. I bought some musk things about it. Who the fuck are you? This ain't your alley. Beat it. Hey! What are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. How? That was supposed to go out with the next batch of salt tuna. What are you suggesting, pal? Wow. Most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine. We're going. This ain't worth it. Well, I see you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nyoka. Sir, please stop. Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? But that's terrible. What happened? I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them, eventually. Of course I would have. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry.
did she now? Well, I can see I was mistaken. Because if Catherine really had sent you, there'd be a lot more expletives in your message. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. We're not keen on rules for rules sake around here. Means Braxton skips work sometimes, but it also means no company boss is telling me when I can take a shit. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? Caleb Herrick. Runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. Because we've got a budget, all right? And in case you haven't noticed, MSI doesn't exactly have a lot of spare bits on hand. Not on Monarch. Sanjar threw out the old work mandates and penalties. Sure, until your workers start making ridiculous demands. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking, mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club. He's usually there. Stealing's such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterobiotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the Saltuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Stellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground six spacer. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. Damn right it is. No. I paid Sublight for it. So, it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. Sure can. If you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Sure. And once you finish helping me, then we can talk about the poster. 
Fine by me. Hey. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. We spat in your spirits, Velma. You notice my mood? I'm surprised you can see straight today. I could be seeing triple and I'd still think you're being unkind. I just might find it funnier. Will you try wrangling half a ton of dead fish with decades old equipment and see what it does for your disposition? Anyway, what do you folks need? Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. Hard workers? They turn dials and flip switches. The machines do all the actual work. Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else around here, I'll tell you that much. I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. Maybe so. But I bet you Caleb runs out of bits first. Then he'll have to come back. He says he's got a stash to tide his crew over. Could be he's all talk, but if the money's real, I bet you he keeps it at home, near the diner. Fine by me. It isn't the famous hacker, enjoying Stellar Bay. What can I do for you? Signed by the Black Hole himself, there's no way I could pass that up. Why, did you want to see it? I don't have it yet. I'm waiting on a few customers to pay up before I can give Velma the bits. You mean Dopey Landing Pad Grimm? I didn't know he and Mr. Nandi were friends. I guess that changes things. Fine. Tell Velma that I don't want the poster anymore. I'll find something else to hang in my shop. New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair, sit a spell and revel with us? Me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered, free of responsibility and worldly cares. Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. It ain't any one thing but the sum of it all, having to work longer shifts for less bits. And the wages we do earn don't cover as much as they used to. Our supervisor Velma goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch. We're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss?
Nope. I'm calling her bluff. If she wants to threaten us, we'll see how she likes it when Sanjar finds out she gave Sublight even more dominion in Stellar Bay. If I knew that, I'd have tried it. Talking reasonably got me nowhere. Maybe you'll fare better. The others wanted to blackmail her, but we're above that. Besides, them are just rumors. We got no proof they're true. I would never endorse such an untoward tactic, you know, but, well, there's rumors that Velma's taking a cut off the profits. So far, it's just gossip, you know, but if there was any proof to be had, it'd be in the Saltuna warehouse, I reckon. Caleb's doing the talking. Talk to Caleb. He speaks for all of us. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. Same thing as me. Where's your proof? Because I know no one's been poking around my terminal lately. I'm in the wrong business if a woman this dense can get away with robbing her company. Just as a... hypothetical. Nothing to see on my terminal, of course. Because I've done nothing wrong. Fine by me. Sure can. If you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. That's a surprise. Tossball being part of her business and all. Take the poster then. And if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Something else on your mind? I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again? If Caleb wants to keep this job? Yeah, and did you miss the part where I'm working doubles to cover for everyone who decides not to show? I'm the one who keeps this place running. That money's mine, one way or another. Fine. Tell Caleb he and his team can have their raise, 
but I need them back here immediately. Something else on your mind? Why don't you grab a chair, sit a spell, and revel with us? Sure thing. What did you want to discuss? Well, I'll be a Raptodon's dinner. Reckon I ought to listen to gossip more often. Here, take this as compensation. It ain't a lot, but I hope it shows how much we appreciate all you've done. Now me and my friends here better get back to work before Velma blows a fuse. Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Sorry, I just get so excited and I always feel like I miss everything that happens in town while I'm up here. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was gonna spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker too. Never get the chance to use it these days. So, guess who Celia brought home the other night? Finally. Now she can stop buying that junk from him. Might improve the smell. <laughs> yeah, but the noise. Oh, you startled me. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Jumpy? Who's Jumpy? I'm not Jumpy. Braxton? I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Dilated pupils, anxious posture, muscle spasms. She's high on some quality stuff. No! Okay, maybe just a little... Braxton always has a good stash, and I just like to let loose a little. Stop thinking about the Marauders and the Raptodons outside, you know? Oh, damn. He told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? I'll be straight with you. Folk who disappear in the wilderness generally aren't able to come back. Don't get your hopes up. 